Hey peeps, Jess here, and today I'm bringing you my tips for saving money on bean to bar chocolate. Because while it's the most ethical and I do love it, it is not cheap. And these are ways that I save money on bean to bar chocolate, so I hope they can help you out. So with that, let's dive in. Number one, when possible, buy in person from a bean to bar chocolate shop. When you can find a bean to bar chocolate shop, they will have education, recommendations, and most importantly, samples. I know this isn't always possible, it's not always safe to go in person, and also we lost a huge number of chocolate shops the last few years. On the other hand, a lot of makers now have their own shops. And even if you can't go in person, which is totally fair, more places like Bar and Coco or The Meadow have social media now that you can go and ask questions directly, or you can email and ask for information. Though usually they have some information on their blog first, so I check the blog before going direct. That being said, if you know what makers you like, my second tip is that buying direct from makers can save you a lot of money. This is something I can only really recommend very recently because up until like three-ish years ago, very few brands had direct online storefronts. This is the best for two things. Either you want something really specialized, like for us, we really like getting the hot chocolate from White Label. Number two, the sales and discounts. They're more likely to have sales. They're more likely to have flash sales, which can be really great. And they're more likely to have really good shipping minimums. So right now, as I'm filming this, for example, Bar & Coco has a $100 minimum spend for free shipping with guarantee and heat protection, which is actually a pretty good deal when we're still in the warmer weather. On the other hand, when I went on Boho's website this same week, Boho had a buy four bars, get free shipping deal. Like, how? Or in the case of Soma Chocolate, even with their shipping being super expensive, it's like $25 US for us to ship from Toronto, it kind of doesn't matter because the prices in Canadian dollars are so cheap direct, it all evens out and is usually a savings if we order enough stuff. The big caveat is you have to know what makers you like. You're committing, in general, to only one brand. There is a trend of some chocolatiers like Sugoi Sweets now offering chocolate bars on the side, but that's not normal, and you're still committing usually $30 to $40 to get free shipping. So this is a great one if you already know what makers you like and you just want to go buy from them, but if you're brand new and still unsure what makers you like, I would stick to the chocolate shops instead. Number three, mailing lists. They rock. I know we live in an age where everyone and their mother is asking for your email address, but seriously, this is the only way at this point, with all the weirdness going on in social media, of keeping up with sales. I used to be able to use Instagram to keep track of sales, and nah. In general, though, if you just keep track of like one mailing list as a reminder, most brands have their big sales around the same time. Labor Day, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, right after Christmas, New Year's maybe, and Valentine's Day. So. Just, I'd use one as a reminder, but if you really want to keep track of flash sales, you do need to sign up individually, and there's no shame in making a spam account to keep track of sales. So like, I know, for example, off the top of my head, that Bar & Coco always has an annual sale in September. Do I remember the exact date? No. So I use the mailing list as a reminder so I don't miss it. Number four, advent calendars. I feel like in the US, we still think of advent calendars primarily as a thing for the UK, or things where you get like really small, like one flavor of chocolate every day. But seriously, the last couple years, advent calendars have been a really amazing way to learn about brands really quickly and effectively. It's, what's really cool is there's both shops making them, like Yahara Chocolate and Bar and & Coco, and makers, like McGuire Chocolate and Soma Chocolate. Are they the best bang for your buck? No. Like, you are not getting huge amounts of chocolate, but you are getting a huge breadth of chocolate, usually from these brands. So like when I reviewed the Soma Chocolate Advent Calendar, I was really impressed, not because it was a ton of chocolate. They do have version for two, and I wish I'd gotten that, but I got what I got, but it covers everything. Like, everything they make but ice cream is represented in that box. I got to try things that are like $15, $20 that I would have never bought otherwise because I wasn't really willing to spend that money, but instead I got to try a little bit of it and see what I thought. There's usually a few more makers every year, so I can't tell you the exact recommendations that I have, but I think the best, like, balance between price and value is probably from Yahara Chocolate. It'll be out probably about November. It's about $45, and it's usually five to six brands. And you get to try a bit from each brand. I think that's really cool. And it includes one piece of Toak, which, given the Toak chocolate starts at $25, it is a steal just to have that one piece in there. And if you'd like to see more of these advent calendars, I have a playlist, and I'll link it up here and down below. Last but not least, number five, bulk baking chocolate. I feel like there's this feeling that you should only get, like, chocolate from the grocery store for baking, or that bulk baking chocolate is only for the fanciest chefs. No! There's two ways I would recommend looking for it. 
when I started, I mainly bought Valrona through Chocosphere. Chocosphere is the biggest online source for bulk baking chocolate. They're based in Tualatin, Oregon, and they are just really great to work with. I will say it can be a bit intimidating to order from them. They're not the most beginner friendly. The website, I don't know when the last time it was updated, but they have like up to 20 kilos of chocolate boxes. And you don't even have to commit to just the big boxes. They usually have bars and small amounts that you can try first. Also, more and more bean to bar makers are making their own baking chocolate. I think this has been a very new thing the last couple years. So like we usually get either white label Mutari or Fresco baking chocolates, and they're not cheap at about 26 ish a pound, but they're way more affordable than buying bars of chocolate and breaking them down into baking chocolate. Also, Fresco usually has a pretty good sale once ish a year, and we wait until that hits and then we buy a lot of chocolate, which we keep track of on the mailing list. It all comes full circle. And those are my tips for saving money on bean to bar chocolate. I know that bean to bar chocolate is a lot. It's a lot to take in, it's a lot of money, it feels like it's this huge investment, and really what it needs to be is what works for you. Nothing wrong with doing what you can afford and what makes you happy, because really the best way to save money on chocolate is to buy the chocolate that you'll eat and not waste it. That's really it. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to help me fight the YouTube algorithm, please hit those like and subscribe buttons or check out this video. It'll be awesome. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Later!